Introduction to the Accounting Equation in the Basic Financial Statements Let's assume that four new CPAs decided to start an accounting and consulting practice in the form of a corporation. They prepared the necessary documentation and sent it to the corporate registry office. The registry office incorporated their business and sent the documents to the new owners. Each of the owners deposited 25000 in the business bank account. In return, the business issued shares to them. The business now owns cash of $100,000. We can generally say that anything the business owns is known as an asset. The shareholders own the business shares, which prove that the business owes the shareholders the amount they invested, which is $100,000. We can now present this relationship in the form of an equation where we show on one side what the business owns and on the other side what the business owes to the owners and others. So the business owns cash of 100,000 and it will appear under the assets category. On the other hand, common shares will appear on shareholders equity with $100,000. As you noticed, both sides are equal. This equation is called the Accounting Equation or the Balance Sheet Equation. On January 1st, the company bought computers for $10,000 in cash. The business owns now $90,000 in cash and computers for $10,000. Computers are also considered assets since the company owns it as well. Let's see the effect on the Accounting Equation. The cash decreases by $10,000 and at the same time the computers, which are assets, increase by the same amount resulting in zero change on the asset side. The total amount of assets is $100,000, which is equal to shareholders' equity on the right-hand side. It is worth mentioning that an activity that affects one or more assets, liabilities, or shareholders' equity is called an accounting transaction. On January 10th, the business bought office furniture for $20,000. It paid $5,000 in cash and the remaining $15,000 is to be paid later. Let's see the effect on the accounting equation. The business owned a new asset, which is the office furniture for $20,000, but gave up $5,000 in cash. So the net change in assets is $15,000. On the other side, the business owes $15,000 to the office furniture vendor. Since the office furniture's vendor is not one of the shareholders, it is classified as a liability. It is regarded as an account payable. Always remember that payable is a liability since the business will be paid in the future. Total assets is equal to total liabilities and shareholders' equity which in this case equals $115,000. Let's review a summary of terminology up till now. Assets are resources that the company owns and have a future economic benefit. This simply means that they have value. Liabilities are all what the business owes to entities other than the owners. Shareholders' equity is what the business owes to the shareholders this is what remains in the assets after paying all liabilities. On January 15th, the business provided consulting services to a client for $14,000. The client paid the amount in cash. Let's see the effect on the previous transaction on the accounting equation. The assets increased in the form of cash for $14,000. Now let's assume that the shareholders decided to stop the business. What is the value that they will get? The total assets is equal to $129,000. So after paying the accounts payable of $15,000, the shareholders will take $114,000. Notice that shareholders' equity increased by $14,000, which represents revenue. So we can see that revenue increases shareholders' equity. On January 20th, the business paid $5,000 for renting the office space. Paying office rent is essential to be able to generate revenue. This is what we call an expense, an amount paid to generate revenue. 
Let's see the effect of the previous transaction on the balance sheet equation. But before going further, let's move the balances to the top to have more room for the following transactions. Assets are reduced in the form of cash for $5,000, making total assets equal to $124,000. On the other hand side, if the shareholders decided to end the business now, they will end by taking $109,000. Notice that the shareholder's equity decreased by $5,000 after this transaction. We can deduce that expenses decreases shareholder's equity. On January 24, the business paid to the office furniture vendor $4,000. Total assets decreased in the form of cash by $4,000 to be equal to $120,000. On the other hand, the cash is paid to reduce the liability. So, liability in the form of accounts payable is reduced for $4,000 to make it equal to $11,000. Notice that there is a decrease on the asset side and another equal decrease on the liability side. Shareholders' equity in such a case is not affected. On January 28, the business provided consulting services for a client for $20,000. However, the client promised to pay within 15 days. The business now owns a promise to receive $20,000 from the client. That is what we call accounts receivable. Remember that receivables are assets. Let's see the effect on the balance sheet equation. Assets increased by $20,000 in the form of accounts receivable. Remember that the client promised to pay the business this amount because the business provided services, which is regarded as revenue. Revenue increases shareholders' equity as we previously mentioned. So shareholders' equity increases by $20,000 as well. On January 30th, the business distributed 3000 of dividends. Note that this is just an assumption for the sake of this example. Dividends are usually distributed towards the end of the period on an annual basis. Let's see the effect of dividends on the accounting equation. Assets decrease by $3,000 in the form of cash. Total assets also decrease to become $137,000. This eventually decreases the amount that is left to shareholders' equity by $3,000 after paying $11,000 of liability. We can deduce that dividends decreases shareholders' equity. Now let's look at the extended accounting equation which includes dividends, revenues, and expenses in the equation as follows. If we subtracted expenses from revenues, we get net income. Revenues and expenses are the main components of the income statement. If we subtracted dividends from net income, we get retained earnings, which is undistributed net income. If we add common shares to retained earnings, we get total shareholders' equity in this case, which is represented in the shareholders' equity statement. The statement of financial position or balance sheet presents assets, liabilities, and shareholders' equity together to show what the business owns and, o and owes to others. Now let's look at the extended accounting equation which includes dividends, revenues, and expenses in the equation as follows. If we subtracted expenses from revenues, we get net income. Revenues and expenses are the main components of the income statement. If we subtracted dividends from net income, we get retained earnings, which is undistributed net income. If we add common shares to retained earnings, we get total shareholders' equity in this case, which is represented in the shareholders' equity statement. The statement of financial position or balance sheet presents assets, liabilities, and shareholders' equity together to show what the business owns and, o and owes to others. To make it clearer, let's put numbers to such relationships. Revenue is composed of $14,000 and $20,000 for a total of $34,000. Expenses are $5,000. Net income is $29,000, which forms the income statement. Subtracting $3,000 of dividends from net income, which is $29,000, will get you a retained earnings of $26,000.
Adding retained earnings to common shares, which is $100,000, will, will get you a shareholder's equity of $126,000. This forms the statement of shareholder's equity. Assets are $137,000, which is equal to the sum of liabilities, $11,000, and shareholder's equity of $126,000, which form the statement of financial position.